Hi folks, this is International Master Kosti Kavutsky, and today I'll be doing a video on the Zwischenzug tactic, also known as the in-between move. This is definitely one of my favorite tactical themes. Um, it's always very unexpected, and <laughs> these tactics are, I believe, in my opinion at least, the most commonly missed forms of tactics in games between strong players, let's say even 1200 or 1400 plus. The reason for this is that these moves are often unexpected and they usually need to be planned in advance. This is rarely a tactic you kind of uh, stumble into. So in our first example, this will be kind of a simpler example, and then we might move on to slightly more complicated ones. Here, this is white to play and win. And if you'd like, you can pause the video and try to find the best move. Okay, I'm assuming you've done that. So the solution here starts with the move queen to b3. White hits the queen on e6. With our queen, this queen is unprotected and, and is also pinned to the king. If black takes on b3, white does not recapture immediately. Instead, we see the point of the tactic, knight takes e7 check. Now the king cannot move to f7, has to go to h8. And after white recaptures a queen on b3, white has won a full piece. Now this seems simple enough, but a lot of times the reason players miss this kind of move is because we tend to make a lot of assumptions with our calculation. Now it's actually a good thing to make assumptions. This is what saves you time when you're calculating. Normal assumptions include like playing actively with your pieces, not pushing pawns in front of your king. It's really very helpful in the thinking process to make useful assumptions. But these assumptions also cause us to miss unexpected tactical resources, which includes the in-between move. Here, in order to solve the problem, what you probably needed to notice is that the bishop on e7 is attacked once and only guarded once, that the queen on e6 is unprotected, and since you knew the theme of the puzzle, I think the solution here is not too difficult to find queen to b3 because you're already looking for these surprising checks where you win material and so on. With that, let's move on to our next example. Here we have a black to play and win, and once again, if you'd like, you can pause the video and try to solve the puzzle for yourself. And here black wins a decisive amount of material, starting with the move rook takes e4. White's queen is pinned along this diagonal so he cannot recapture, and after queen takes b6, black throws in the intermezzo rook takes e1 check, king has to move, black will recapture the queen, and be up a full rook. Not a difficult puzzle once you are aware of the theme, but again, during the game, you might not notice this because rook takes e4, even if you notice this move is possible, automatically our brains kind of insert queen takes b6, a takes b6 immediately, and then we think, oh, well, rook takes e4, and, and we're going to end up down the rook, so this isn't working. But if you take your time with your calculation, and you know that every move you, you have options, then you're more likely to spot that rook takes e1 does come with check, a very important check that allows black to win this material. Our next example here is white to play and win. So go ahead and pause the video if you'd like to solve the position for yourself. And here white wins with knight takes g6. We're opening up an attack against the queen on c7. And if black takes the queen on g3, white is able to throw in knight takes rook with check. Black takes back hg3 and white has won an exchange in the process. Now this one I think is actually not too hard to find in a game, even or assuming that you, no one gives you a hint that you have a tactic available, because all that it requires you is to notice that the queen here is unprotected, because the queens are already lined up, and this is we know to be tactically significant. So most players, when they notice that your queen is lined up with your opponent's queen with a piece in between, we're automatically looking for some kind of discovered check with the knight. But since the knight can't give any checks in one move, you can then look for these in-between moves because you know, well, the knight is within range of the king to give a, a check on the second move. This is what opens up the opportunity for this in-between move. Next, of course, you have to notice that our queen on g3, when black takes it, 
Black is not taking it with check, meaning that we have this potential again for an in-between move. Once you kind of notice that the queen on c7 is hanging, you look for the discovered attack immediately. If you don't find it, then you can look for this resource of the uh, in-between move. And then you notice that, oh, knight takes g6, followed by knight takes h8, check, does win uh, material. And of course, you can then go for the tactic. And now let's move on to the next example. Here we have white to play and win. And I'll give you guys a chance here to pause your video and try to find the best move. All right, hopefully you pause the video and spend some time looking for the solution. And here we have a very nice trick with actually a couple of different tactics going on. Well, the winning move is knight to c6. This blocks the coordination between black's queen and rook and hits the rook on e7, which is currently hanging with check. One of the other thing I should mention as far as uh, looking for patterns when you're trying to look for these kinds of tactics, you should always keep in mind of which pieces are hanging with check, as this is usually going to be relevant when it comes to uh, in-between moves. So if black takes on e2 with the queen, white throws and knight takes e7 check, this is the whole point of the combination, and after king h7, white wins back the queen and is up a full rook. But the other point, for example, this move knight to g6 here would not work, is that after knight to c6, if black plays rook takes e3, white has queen takes c2, which he would not have if the knight was not on c6. So putting the knight here is very important in order to block the coordination of black's rook to the black queen that was on c2. After knight g6, if black plays rook takes e3, queen takes c2, black can recapture, and after f takes e3, black ends up taking this knight on g6 and is up material. So putting the knight on c6 is very important for a number of reasons. Number one, you hit the rook on e7 with check. Number two, you block the coordination, which actually makes black's queen on c2 hanging. This is definitely a tough move to see. The only way you're going to be able to find this kind of move during the game is if you're just going to be tactically alert, looking for pieces that are unprotected, pieces that are only protected once and already attacked once, and of course looking for these opportunities to take a piece with check. If you're being kind of aware and observing some of these tactical elements, it really drives up your chances of finding uh, the right solution in, in many positions. With that, hopefully you guys found this lesson instructive on in-between moves. Once again, these are some of the trickiest tactics out there because they almost almost always are very unexpected. But over time, you do start to notice some patterns as you solve more and more of these puzzles. So I'd encourage you guys to check out the exercises provided along with the lesson. Really put your full effort into them and, and try to find the right solution. And I wish you the best of luck. Until then... This has been International Master Kosti Kavutsky here signing off.